Hello and welcome to The Hearing, our music review show here on the channel. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, let's just get straight to this week's album, which is from 2017, Standing Stones by Marion Call. Marion Call is an American singer-songwriter based in Juneau, Alaska. She's known for her lyrics, which are often based on unusual subject matter. She's written about Firefly, Battlestar Galactica, Pride and Prejudice, St. George and the Dragon, Beer, Coffee, the ISS, uh, a recent song about the unusual relationship between Pluto and its largest moon, Charon. Um, <laughs> And her use of atypical instruments, uh, kazoo, rain stick. Uh, she even frequently uses a typewriter as percussion. Uh, and as well as her rise to popularity through the use of the internet and social networking. Um, Singing Stones uh, is based on a Christian prayer book called The Book of the Hours, uh, which has a prayer for each day. Uh, Marion has said that she's attempting with this album to create a secular version of it. Ha, huh, okay. And it's her 10th album, um, capping her first decade of recording, 2007 through 2017. It was produced and edited by Marion and Brian Ray and features Marion on keyboards, percussion, and vocals. Brian Ray on guitar, keyboards, banjo, and saxophone and percussion. Uh, Scott Barkin on guitars. Kyle Robarge on bass. St Stephen Bidwell on drums and percussion. Ellen Kilcup on cello. Papa Diggity on harmonica. I suspect that's Paul Pugh, her father. He frequently plays piano on her albums. You think um, that's a stage name, huh? Possibly. Um, <laughs> Her Majesty Laura Zahesky on mandolin. Uh, Joseph, Joseph Woolard on baritone sax. Derek Phelps on trumpet. Mobley, Molly Lewis, and Seth Boyer on background vocals. Brian O'Flynn on DMX drum machine. Calder Lemons on percussion. Zippy on percussion. Um, Zippy was her late cat whose ashes she keeps in a tin and uses for percussion on several of her albums <laughs> and live. Okay. And, and the donor circle on claps and vocals. Full disclosure, I am part of Marion's donor circle, so my voice and hand claps are on the title track of this album. Oh, okay. Uh, and at the end of the credit list on Bandcamp, she says, listen carefully and in order. <laughs> so the order is important on this one. Uh, also should note, um, because it's Thursday as you're watching this, if you're watching it when it goes up, um, this episode's going out early. It's flipping with Zombie Takeout because Marion has an online concert this upcoming weekend on, on Saturday the 21st, uh, and I want to promote it. Um, it's not a normal online concert, which is what I thought it was up until a couple of days ago. Um, the, which And our normal online concerts are amazing. I've been to several. Uh, but this one's a fundraiser uh, for herself. Uh, she's independent. She's got to make money however she right. can. And she's doing karaoke. She's offered her donor circle the opportunity to suggest songs. And and, quests, uh... and then she's having people tip to you know push songs further up on the list. And the kicker is she didn't grow up listening to pop music. That so, explains a lot. Yes. <laughs> and she said that there's maybe two songs on the list that she's even heard. And she's not going to research or rehearse them ahead of time. So she's oh, going to wow. go in blind, never hearing these songs with just the lyrics and the backing track and improv the melody. How, yeah, I was going to say, how the fuck is that going to work? How do you, do, I don't know, how do you get I a melody? I don't know, but I can't wait to see it. Saturday, April 21st, uh, 2018, as we're recording this, in case you're watching in the future, uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern, I, I think, and I'll double check before this episode goes up, uh, 1 p.m. Alaska time. Um, so, yeah, it should be very, very interesting. Uh, and the show is free, but it, she, she'll, of course, accept that storing in before it. Now, finally, on to the tracks themselves. Uh, as I say, well, as I try to remember to say every week, I don't edit the music into the show for copyright reasons. But down in the description, you'll find a link to Standing Stones on Bandcamp. Yes, I'm using Bandcamp again uh, in case you didn't watch last week. Um, whenever an album's on Bandcamp, that's what I'm going to use because they allow you to stream it for free um, and pay whatever you want up, up of, uh, at or above a base price. Um, and they gave a larger cut to the artist than any other streaming, you know, or um, iTunes or anything like that out there, Amazon, what have you. So I highly recommend using them. I've bought a lot there. All right, finally, on to track one, Bones. And um, Marion did a an appearance on a radio show the day the album was released, uh, February 24th of, 17, of 2017, and said that this song is basically a tribute to St. Vincent. It's not uh, Dr. McCoy. Mm -hmm. it, it's a tribute to St. Vincent because she was listening to a lot of St. Vincent working on the album. And it, really? it shows. Uh, I love the stark opening. It's just one note on a piano and some drums. 
I, I do love how her voice changes from, you know, kind of comes out as shy in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then it, it just, you know, up, it strengthens up, you know, to yeah, yeah. to what it, you know, climaxes <laughs> to. And it's very electronic at first, which is unusual oh, yeah. for her work in this album particularly. And, and it kind of gets more less electronic as it goes on. Um, and the vocals kind of swirl. You can't really catch all the lyrics just from listening to it because there's like three different lines going on at once. Right. And it sets up a lot of the themes of the album. Um, there, there's a line about how um, bone, um, I'm trying to remember it offhand. I should have put this one in my notes. Uh, so I overestimated <laughs> my ability to remember it. Here we go. Um, the line brace to stitch a story on and referring to bones comes back at the end. And there's a reference to the 12 ages of man, which comes back in a later song. Or, right, yeah. that you know how it ends. Or we're only bones with stories on yeah. in the end, and, and there are themes that continue through the album. This isn't exactly a concept album, but it, it, it's held together by some recurring themes. Yeah, there's you know bones and stones. You know, yeah. it's sort of, I guess, what's held together. You know, what yeah. what's your foundation and, and what we leave behind. Yeah. And um, speaking of, of body parts, I love the the aggressive bridge. Um, you know, she's talking about you know standing soldiers from my skin, fingers at my fingertips, and the guitar is just pounding. It, oh, yeah. it is a great contrast from this you know stark electronic opening. And it ends with this drum solo that reminds, <laughs> effectively, that reminds me a lot of the opening to the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. Oh, really? There was a section in the opening theme that was just drums. I don't even remember the theme to the, to the new Battlestar. But... I went back and listened to it today to make sure I was thinking right. And there's a section with drums, but there's also a lot of other instruments and some vocals on it. I mean, it, it faked me out because I thought we were just at this point where we were going full on Prague and it was, you know, bridging into like yet another section. And instead it was just the end. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. oh all right. <laughs> and then there's just this one last guitar chord. That reminds me a bit of Dancing Days. I think it's a it's a C sharp minor on a Telecaster, which is what Jimmy Page usually played in the studio, and I know that's what Scott Barkin played on the album. Led um, Zeppelin is something that I, I hear more of even than Saint Vincent in this, honestly. And this song particularly, that's interesting. On this album, like oh, Led yeah. Led Zeppelin was like the one that I you know I I guess it's it's a game I play where I try to think of like okay. Where, where, what are the influences? Mm-hmm. If I were to describe so someone meets someone, uh, how would I go to describe this? And honestly, this is you know confounded me the most. I mean, I know it's uh-huh. I know there's Led Zeppelin mm-hmm. meets someone, but I'm not sure. I'm like they might be giants. No, maybe not necessarily. They might be giants. Um. Well, Matt, when, Matt, when she was working on the album, I I backed this one on Kickstarter, and you know, like I said, my voice is on it. So I've been following the pro. I followed the process for like two years. Um. She made a big deal about the drums on the album because a lot of her stuff is very acoustic, and and kind of folky. And this is you know certainly her most rock album, and, and so the Zeppelin influence makes sense. Uh, she also describes herself on the Bandcamp page as Joni. So Joni Mitchell meets Regina Spector, having been raised on, um, or the love child of Joni Spector of Joni Mitchell. And Joni Regina Mitchell Spector. was definitely and another one that I was having thinking. been raised on TMBG. She loves TMBG. She did a cover album. Really? Okay. She covered them. Um, so like I heard, kind of a fleeting. They might be giants in there on the album, but it was like, but not enough to say you no. Know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Joni Mitchell definitely was another one that I was like, yeah, or Carly Simon. But I think Joni Mitchell more so. Her acoustic stuff is very reminiscent of Joni Mitchell. All right, on to track two, No Paper. And then um, Bones is kind of the story, uh, is about being born. And, and, you know, gestation and birth. It it kind of follows a life in that sense, and a lot of ways the album does. And this is very much childhood and sort of the teen years. You know, it's that, that infinite potential. Are you saying she did a uh, Days of Future Past here, sort of? Well, that's about the day. This yeah. Is, this is more direct. I mean, and, and life was the subtext. Right, the right. Past. This is more direct. And right. it's really just the first few songs and maybe the last one. It, she doesn't stick really heavily to the theme. <laughs> um, but you know, this one is basically jazz rock fusion. It's a jazz vocal with a rock band. Right. Like, it begins very, like, funky rock and... Mm. Uh, 
and I would say, and I have my notes here, uh, I found myself hooked, you know, for this artist at that first jazz break. Because it sounds like it's just going to be your typical kind of funky rock song. And then there's just like this crazy jazz break uh, in the, the like, vocals, early, early, yes. Yeah, jazz vocals, and, I was, yeah. and I was just like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Her, her acoustic <laughs> stuff, like I said, very jazz influenced as well. Um, and I love the bass on this. Shout out to Kyle Robarge. His his playing is very simple, but it's perfectly in the groove. Um, and also, again, another shout out to Scott Barkin, um, an amazing guitarist. Um, Marion uh, said during that radio appearance that she asked him to play like an 11 year old who just got his first guitar. <laughs> and he he definitely evokes that. It's, a, <laughs> it's very noisy and very chaotic. Um, I've been that kid. And you can't do that with no experience. You can't play what Scott Bargain played on this track. You need to know what you're doing to be able to do well, yeah. it what you did. It's kind of like how you have to be a really good actor to deliberately act badly or, or singer to deliberately sing badly. Same kind of principle. Um, and I love the baritone sax and the kind of almost distorted harmonica. They, they play perfectly with the atonal guitar. And and also uh, on the line, um, there's no shouting loud enough to tell you what I gotta gotta say. She loves. I love that she deliberately goes a little bit off key. Oh, I didn't catch that on that line. It's it's just a little bit. I think you have to have a bit of an ear to notice. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of a song called "Love and Harmony," the first Marianne Call song I'd heard um, when she appeared on a podcast called NSFW. Um, on the studio version, the song is about karaoke, and. <laughs> On the word karaoke in the chorus, she, on the studio version, she just goes a hair off key. In the, on the live version, I saw she went completely off, like dead cat off key, <laughs> and and that's when I immediately became a fan. So I love that she went a little off key on that line in the song. On to track three, Oregon Trail. This one starts with just a harmonized vocal that is so tight it sounds electronic. Right. It's actually three or four people, um, and it's so perfectly precise that you you think it's a harmonizer. But the harmonies fall apart as the song goes on, which I love. So is it voiceover, or is it... Is no, it, it just... it's, it's Marion, uh, Seth Boyer, Molly okay. um, Lewis, and possibly Mobley. I recognize, I've heard Seth Boyer and Molly Lewis before. I haven't heard Mobley, so I don't recognize their voice. Because, um, yeah, I, it, it is a great beginning, just yeah. that acapella... Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it really does grab you right in. And this is on the surface about the Oregon Trail and, you know, traveling westward and running into all sorts of problems. But it's also kind of about that late teens, early 20s period when you leave home and suddenly get punched in the face by reality. <laughs> or you move out to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and the, the line that really gets to me is it. The verse chorus structure is a little loose on this album, and in general with Marion's work. But I think it's I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's the third verse. Um, we went somewhere out west where nowhere seemed to feel like home, and digging in the yard we found we found somebody else's bones. That moment that the shovel hit, we bowed before the things we should have known. That line of the moment that the shovel hit, we bowed before the things we should have known just kills me every time. It, it, just the whole image, you know. Uh, it, on so many levels about you, we thought this was just, we were the first people here, mm -hmm. you know, we thought we were Neil Armstrong. Well, yeah, she true, just used those true. words. And then, uh, wait, wait, somebody else had already done this mm -hmm. and, and died and failed and lived and right. whatnot right here. So yeah, that. And it, she talks about, it, it was just our, our generation's selfish. Um, uh, well, I can't remember something like selfish. Um, vague idea you know to, to go out to think we were the first ones traveling out right and, and i love how in the middle of the song it's all this it's very mellow and acoustic and then drums and bass come in when the things start to go bad <laughs> that's when the percussion comes in and it gets very minor key and very mellow and very dark i should say and there's another reference to the 12 ages of man at the end and that's when the harmonies really start falling apart. Uh, we were not the first ones here, is the line. And they start drifting and kind of slipping a little bit of out, out of key as things are going really bad for the exposition or expedition in the song. Until they just completely um, 
fall apart until there's just the last line, but Marion alone, we will make no more miles today. All right, on to track four, Standing Stones. This Final is really track. the drums. <laughs> this is the drums that Marion was going on about. Right. Because this is a straight up rock song, the first on the album. And I love that there's banjo on a rock song. The, the, this is definitely a rock song. No, no bones about that. But, but but Brian Ray's banjo playing is is front and center in a few spots, which is a really interesting contrast. Jonathan Colton does that occasionally. Yeah. And, and Scott Barkin really shines on this one, too. There's actually a guitar solo, which is very rare on Marion's music. Really? Okay. It, albeit a short one. And the lyrics are really about sort of the history of humanity. You know, we, we carved all the limestone to show the stars ascent. And, you know, we, you know, built this, you know, we built different things and just kind of traces our development and says, you know, all we leave are standing stones. Uh, hope for development. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love uh, her voice in this just, I mean, it's like a storm and it just mm -hmm. feels like it surrounds you in this. Yeah. And it's this great cutting guitar and, you know, first time the drums are really up front as in a rock context, because they were very present on Bones. And uh, it's, and of course, I got to shout out the background vocals. <laughs> <laughs> ah, except that one asshole <laughs> clapping. I don't know where they found him. On the track five, Hope. This is actually the second version of the song that she's released. There was an acoustic version that appeared on her two thir uh, 20, 2013 album, Sketchbook. This one is surprisingly more sparse than that version, even though it's electric and has bass and drums. Yep. Right. It, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of a, a letdown after everything that's come before it. It's a contrast. But I mean, it, I think it's still well executed. I just think in, in the order, and I think that's the only criticisms I, I probably have come up with on this album <laughs> is that it like, the order just should be different <laughs> sound wise. But I'm thinking if there's a concept at play here, yeah, this, this makes what sense. You after, do, you know? yeah. <laughs> um, this makes sense thematically at this point, you know, um, talking about um, the Oregon trail about how you're getting punched in the face by reality. And then all we leave behind is, you know, standing stones. And then we come into, you know, my, and my, the chorus, which I love um, my hope. It is not fra Yeah. What is it? My, oh, I wish I'd written these things down. Um, my hope, <laughs> it is not frail. It's, it is not light. It is the anchor of the anchor. My hope, it is not, it's not the sail. It is the anchor. I'm blanking on some of the lyrics. I apologize. Um, but as someone with, who, who has issues with anxiety and depression, the idea of hope being an anchor, it really resonates with me. Huh. I, it's just so lyrically dense. I wish I, I'd had more time with it because mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, it was impossible for me to like get it on in like a day or two. <laughs> I, I should point out that as I mentioned, I kickstarted this. I backed this one on Kickstarter, so I got it immediately. And I'm trying to remember what you shared with me, like a song or two of this. I think as soon as it hit Spotify, I I heavily recommended it. So I know you yeah. can do about half of it. Um, but uh, so I got it immediately, and I I think it was the only thing I listened to for about a month, like literally at all. And I listened to a lot of music. I had to I, I stop do that, listening though. to it so I didn't get sick of it. <laughs> like uh, that's you know, that's how I'll, I listen to a lot of albums where I'll just that you know there'll be like a handful maybe mm -hmm. or sometimes if it's just something I'm really into, it I'll only do it once a day though. I won't do it more. It's very rare that I found an album that I'm like, oh, I just got to fucking listen to that again. I mean, there's like you, you can't even. You count on one hand, well, not even. Yeah. Um, I don't usually do it all the way through. I'll do that a couple of times, and then I'll just pick out particular songs, whatever's bouncing around in my head. I'll, I'll go to that. Yeah. Um, back to Hope. I yes. love the imagery in the last verse. Um, and this I do have in my notes. I, this is the point where I finally thought to copy down lyrics. Um, I took the first <laughs> home to you on the 4th of July with lightning a riot above and fireworks below. Something's possessed the Midwestern summer sky. Thunder and sparklers, aurora and stars, and a red subarctic sunrise. Just you can, I can picture that what it would be like to be in that flight, you know, with all this chaos around it. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> and it ends with the line, um, or it almost ends with the line. Uh, I wonder if I've been struck by lightning yet, which 
is a very curious line because the song is about overcoming loss and maintaining hope. And I wonder if that was a sign of being numb. You know, you don't know if you've been struck by lightning or if it's about um, inspiration. You know, that's often shown as a, a lightning strike. The the uh, saying of uh, don't go home with hope. <laughs> <laughs> And the jazz trumpet, which I didn't notice till the end of the song. I loved that. Because it is a very, it's not exactly a jazz, it's a ballad, but it, it, yeah. it really leans into jazz when you bring in the trumpet. Right. So I'm not sure if this would have had more attention if it were earlier in the album, you know, but I'm yeah. sure um, with multiple listenings, it'll, you know. Mm -hmm. Musically, <laughs> I can see what you mean. Um, it would have made a bit more sense maybe after um, uh, Bones, perhaps. Maybe because like before Oregon Trail, you're just like, holy shit, that's, you know, like, I mean, it's a ballad, but it's like really interesting, you yeah. know, and then to go from that to doing a, a rock song. A, a, yeah. And then just doing a straight up ballad. It's kind of like, oh, um, <laughs> all right. Uh, you know, you want to build, but you know, thematically. But yeah, yeah. Although, if you've been paying attention to the order of albums we've been reviewing, I, I tend to like. I'm the one who set it up. I tend, I tend to like abrupt shifts in that sense. Um, oh, abrupt shifts are are cool and everything, but sometimes, and especially if you're you're evoking the Led Zeppelin, uh -huh. <laughs> it's about the build. <laughs> you're getting to that when that levy breaks, you know. Uh, and speaking of abrupt shifts, track six. Pop rock was an interesting change of pace on this album. Yes. And not something I expected. Having been a Marion fan for a few years when this, this album came out, this was a real real change of pace. And I'd heard some demos. Um, but the donor circle, I talked about the donor circle earlier. What it is is you pay a certain amount and you get access to unreleased songs and demos and as she's working on things and all that, all this behind the scenes stuff. So I'd heard um, demo versions of this song throughout the process. And I never quite got my head around it until I heard the finished version because it is such a departure for her. It is a straight up pop rock song. Yeah. And it's a comment on social media, which fits the genre perfectly. And I just, this would have been a choice, my choice for a single. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's, yeah, I don't think she, she did um, this one. I th she's released a video for Oregon Trail. I think right. the official single was the um, title track. Though right. He hasn't really done a video for that one. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you're marketing music and you've got a title track to an album, yeah, yeah, of course, you should always release it. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's really talking about, uh, and I don't want to pin this on anybody in particular, any group in particular, but the people on social media who really live for the likes and the views and all of that, and the, yeah. the, the sort of the approval on social media. Um, Those a, dudes who put podcasts together. Oh what no, the we're wrong with them. We're new media, not social media. That's different. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, we're, we're talking about the people who are. I'm referring specifically to the people who are like professional Instagrammers. True. Well, I mean, you know what? If they're professional, though, well, if yeah, that's yeah. their living bucket. You know, yeah, fair point. Um, like but, the one that went and and shot youtube it's like they were fucking with their money guys well, <laughs> you know i've seen people get even angrier than that when they've got their money fucked with <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah let's uh, sidestep that a little bit but um you know the people who the, the taste makers as they're called um yeah. they, they make a living showing interesting things on youtube and, and even just aside from the professionals um just the people who live for the um validation from strangers that they get on social right. media that's it. Because, I mean, I worked a job for a number of years where I was in internet hell. Uh -huh. And it was my job to look at the business's reviews. Oh. And so I've seen them all. Uh -huh. I've seen them all. I know when I'm reading a restaurant review and they begin with, it was Valentine's Day and it was a negative review. <laughs> I'm like, well, that person's an asshole who has no idea what they're talking about. Uh -huh. um, but yeah. It's just and, this narcissistic, right. and, and the song the song is is about a, a person getting ready for a date, yeah, um, and, and talking about how they're going to put it on social media and then all of these likes and and get all this attention. Um, it's more important than the date. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's the line: uh, "No one knows if we felt our feelings yet." <laughs> and give me proof that I exist. You know, I this do, is fun. I bet. I do love songs about 
living in our time in this mm -hmm. particular time yeah, yeah. because there will be people who won't understand years from now just mm -hmm. how jarring this was to have gone from just being people to conducting our own PR and social media. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, remember yeah. the days we were just people? I know <laughs> I sound a thousand years old, but it's true. Uh -huh. And I and I can't bash it too much. I mean, one of my closest friends lives in France, so without the internet, I wouldn't know her. Oh, yeah. right, totally. Another I mean, very close friend lives in Maryland. You know. Well, wait a minute, though. I I've been on this we're, internet we're longer than this. Most we're recording this from halfway across the country. Of course. I, I, I was on this internet long before most of these motherfuckers yeah, have true, been. True. I've been on it since the mid eighties uh -huh. when we were doing just, you know, green text or whatever, you know, and BB, you know, bulletin board services. <laughs> but there's something about social media particularly, cause we had instant messenger before then. Right. Um, and chat rooms and such, but social media particularly, has made it, and I think it's maybe the use of photos, the addition of photos, because we didn't really have that in chat rooms and um, I am, that makes it about the appearance. Yeah. It's the MTV of social interaction online. It's been one of the toughest developments of our, of our uh, recording here of going mm -hmm. from just, um, you know, having to wear pants and stuff. Although I am for oh, no. the camera only down. shows us from the chest up. We could easily do no pants. <laughs> <laughs> to comment a bit on the music, of course. Uh, loved the 80s style synth on the bridge, the Is It Midnight Yet part, um, and the little touches of mandolin um, on a pop rock song. Again, unusual instruments in the genre. It's a straight up pop rock song, but there are these little bits of mandolin throughout it. Just that added nice contrast. And another abrupt shift. Uh, track seven, I love this title. Medi mediocre algorithmic first days. It's a good companion piece to the last track, though. Sure, really. there, there's a it is a beautiful companion piece from yeah. one to the other. Yeah. And this is classic Marion acoustic folk. Um, I love how the wordy title contrasts with the really mellow nature of the song, because she gets that line out in the first line in the, in the first phrase. She gets that title out. The yada. <laughs> yeah, and it it just kind of is it is an interesting contrast, and there are some great relationship metaphors um he brought a story for me he had it custom made um asked if i could try on the role he had his eye on and then there's a, later she talks about armor and it's all about um getting into a relationship because you have nothing better going on at the time and then over the years realizing you don't fit into it you know he's perfectly they're a perfectly fine person but it's just not the right fit for you yeah and getting years down the line and realizing you've what you've and dug yourself into. So yeah, I'd choose the line. It was heavy gilded armor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I love when the rhythm section comes in like about three quarters of the way, actually more like almost toward the very end, the rhythm section just comes in for the last part of a verse very suddenly. Now my first criticism, I only have a few criticisms of the album and they're all very nitpicky. I'll admit, um, there, the line, when it isn't your story, when it isn't your song, she repeats a few times. A little too much for my taste. I think maybe there was one too many. I think um, yeah, a lot of her, her work reminds you of Ted Leo. Um, Who will be hopefully be reviewing next week. And, and I mean, I think, I, I, think it, I think it's this one that I noticed the comparisons to one of the songs that he put out on his most recent, like at, just after this or... Mm -hmm. Maybe around the same time, actually. I, although this was early seventeen, I think he came out late seventeen, um, where where he just repeats the the line at the end, and it just it is a cool effect, I think. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, especially if you're 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 just laying it on there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a song Nazarene that he has that it's kind of his first foray into something progish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll check it out. All right, on to track eight, Independence. Another stark change. Um, this starts off with this really chunky staccato acoustic guitar and a very angry vocal, which is again unusual for Marion. And it's also the most, the only really political song on the album. Uh, we talked about Flowbots being very obvious. This is a yeah. little less obviously political, but uh, in the second verse, she says, uh, The frontier lives on in the dreams of certain men. All, all thinking themselves hero, heroes, all wild-eyed to defend their right to never make a village square, their right to never build, uh, lay a brick for someone else's sake. 
I, I think that's pretty obviously political. Yeah. But I mean, it's <laughs> everything is political now, you yeah, know, <laughs> even not, even our decision to not be political is political <laughs> in a way. Fair point. Fair point. Uh, <laughs> Uh, although this might be the weakest of the album, I try to find really? like a weakest link of the yeah. album. But I, of course, that's since the album is so strong; yeah. it's not really that relevant. Which one would be the weakest? <laughs> it, it's one of my favorites, actually. I, I just love how in the intensity of it. Um, I do have again another minor nitpicky criticism. Um, she gets to what is effectively the bridge of the song, um, the and the road part. It goes from this this really chunky staccato guitar to this fin finger picked really mellow section really pretty section with mandolin and the, it just kind of feels like the bait the bottom drops out of the song a little bit she doesn't yeah. really transition into it it's a bit jarring it's it's i adjust to it pretty quickly but it's initially it's a little jarring to have this solid beat fall away and there's really no um reason for it in in the in the lyrics but i love the last verse Shove until they shatter, shoulder to the wheel, because independence is a myth, but loneliness is real. Um, and the last line, and I cursed the blind spot made you think you did. I have never heard such rage in a whisper. Huh. I, you know what? I didn't pick up what she was saying at the end. Uh, it's at the end of each verse. Um, right. um, you're talking about you know, independence and how you think you can build a barn alone. That's the the analogy in the first verse. Right. Um and she says, and I curse, I, I only have the last part of it here, but um, I curse the burden made, made you think you could. And I, I curse the blind, blind spot, spot made you think you did. did. Huh. And it repeats throughout the song. And in the last the last time she hits that, I curse the blind spot made you think you did. She's whispering it, but in it with a tremendous amount of rage. Right. I love that. Yeah, um, you, to, could, you yeah. could get the feeling, but but I couldn't like catch what it was exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. On to track nine, Vespers. This is my current favorite, uh, but that to me that doesn't really mean much. I think most of the album has been my favorite at different times. Um, this is one I am very tempted to quote the entire set of lyrics to. Uh, I agree. This is without a doubt the the strongest part of the album, hands down. And this one seems to be about in, in getting back to the original theme of bones and no paper, kind of yeah. like hitting your thirties and realizing you know what you were doing as an adolescent wasn't really working <laughs> and, you know, life hitting you in the face again in a, in a very different way in a kind of a transformative way. Um, I love the line. Um, and in the last late, my scars all bear witness to what I've lived through. And I dreamed up another tattoo. <laughs> in other words, another scar, another, you know, yeah. I thought of another way to give myself another scar <laughs> or uh, my binaries break in the dark after dusk. So I'm done running from what was hard and what hurt. That's why I've not been a tattoo person. I've got enough scars as yeah. this. I have, four, I have four of them, and I want more. So I'm on the other end of the spectrum. But um, in terms of scars, I have a, share, a fair amount right, of those. I'm sure you do. But I just love the idea. In this case, obviously, psychological scars. And and you know the idea of dreaming up another one, You know, wanting to do something that you know is going to scar you. Yeah. And um, the beat, the chorus. Um, so our suffering wrote us a song. So our bravery broke all our bones. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, that when having, you know, grown up in the 90s, having been, you know, an adolescent in the 90s, you know, so our <laughs> suffering wrote us a song really hits. <laughs> uh, yeah, the after the ordeal and just, just well, at least I got a song out of it. <laughs> I, I love the the kind of choral harmonies on No Surprise. Yes. It's almost like a church choir. Uh, empty hands help you find your way home. That line was actually based on a video game called Don't Starve. Oh, yeah? Um, in the game, if you have empty hands, it means your, your inventory is clear. Right. So you can easily get through the game. You have plenty of space to carry things. Um, so it, it really wasn't relevant to the topic, but it works. And it's very interpretive. I love that. Yeah. You know, but, it's kind of like freeing yourself, you mm -hmm. know, of all your baggage. Exactly. Um, second verse, I think, is what got me to, the, to realize it's about hitting your 30s and realizing the old ways don't work anymore. <laughs> um, 
in my garden 12 columns stretched skyward there were pedestals not long ago where my um, childish ideas and precarious idols did go and she talks about tearing them down with ropes and resignation and replacing them with um, heroes and hope or just hey I, I don't think I can drink that much anymore <laughs> well that's it <laughs> And another great line. So your victory came at a cost. So to find yourself got you so lost. That line hits me so hard. Um, holding tight made it slip, to your, uh, slip through your grasp. The, sor the storm drove you to shelter at last. You know, it, you, I think you have to have some years on you. Yeah. Um, Marion is 10 years younger than me. Oh, actually, one day shy of 10 years younger than me. Her birthday's on February 24th. Mine's February 25th. Um, so, you know, she... I, I understand getting to that age is when you realize, you know, shit didn't quite work out the way I thought it would. <laughs> it's true. You're a kid. You've got this like logical progression or most kids do. I think they've got this. Okay. I'm going to do this at this age, this at this age and this at this age. And then you realize none of this works. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. Nothing. There is no map. There is no <laughs> terrain. Even you are just, you're, you're kind of, you know, surfing an avalanche to quote uh, Spock's beard. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, and so I got to get rid of the stuff that I thought was going to work and that I was relying on, replace it with stuff that might work. Yeah. Yeah. Even though there's no guarantee for that. Um, and at the end, there's just, just kind of this jam session where the band keeps going and the background vocals repeat. And her voice, her voice sounds odd, kind of fuller. And then she does on yeah. the rest of the album. I don't know if it's the key or not. I checked to see if she was maybe a little off. No, she's perfectly on key, of course, as always, unless it's deliberate. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just the register. Something sounds a little odd. Yeah, I say she like gets Carol King or Carly Simon yeah, yeah. here at most, and they only you've got this Led Zeppelin style epic, you know, with the harmonies all mm -hmm. folded in and everything. So it's just this, this is definitely just the best off the album. On to track 10, The Devil. This is another one that really resonates with me. Um, it's about facing your demons. Um, being Actually being confronted with them in the middle of the night. And I love the rhythmic effect of the repeated lyrics. I was complaining about repeated lyrics earlier, but in this case it works. <laughs> well, that's that's a style of of poetry that, that I mean, dates back. Yeah. I mean, Native American culture used it the most. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't the rhyme, it was the repetition. Um, yeah, it, yeah. And, you know, it's uh, stuff that Rage Against the Machine was using, you know, mm -hmm. all of which yeah. are American dreams, you know, when right. he repeats a mantra. The last person the um, killing in the name of. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's where yeah. I think they're both going with here. And, and this is another one with throwing lyrics, and I, and the vocals are a little are doubled, and they're a little different on each side. This one right. you really need to listen to with headphones. Yeah, um, well, I, I love listen to everything with headphones. Yeah, same here. Um, My computer doesn't even have speakers, <laughs> which I kind of wish it did, honestly. Uh, I, I love the atmosphere the horns give it. The horns are really up and fr up front on this one, and um, the the um, bridge, the lines about fear are my new litany against fear. Frank Herbert is out. Marion Call is in. <laughs> and this one I can quote from memory without even having to look at my notes. You cannot intimidate me. Fear is my old friend. We dated for a while and she still calls me now and then. I've gone all the way with fear and back. You don't know what I've seen. And without her on your side, you cannot turn me against me again. I have repeated that to myself so many times in the last year and change. Like I said, this song really hits me. It is the mind killer. Yeah. Um, and I love how big the ending gets. She's just kind of scatting over these big horns and the band is just going full, full, full steam. And then it gets very quiet and fades out. It's this great abrupt change at the end. Uh, I mean, the harmonies on this, of course, mm -hmm. I think are, are just absolutely excellent. Um, and a lot of it is Marion on this one. It's, it's. I mean, I'm sure Seth and Molly and, and Mobley are in there, but um, it's a lot of Marion kind of duetting with herself. And this is one I would think, I think with the, it should have been switched with um, with Vespers. Okay. In order. You know, kind of like to build up to, to build it. Build up to the, the hit of Vespers, yeah. Yeah, the conventional prog wisdom <laughs> <laughs> is, is you know, you, you build up to your climax, 
you either have that climax at the end or you have it uh, the second to the last song with like something mellow at the end to kind of reflect back on what you heard. Mm -hmm. And getting to the mellow at the end, track 11. Exactly. <laughs> the logical song for the end. <laughs> Grandpa had it right. A really nice mellow opening, a nice contrast after the devil. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of a return to simplicity, both in terms of lyrics and musically. Um, and it completes the original theme, um, though there's a line where only bones with stories on. Um, at the bones uh, at the bones of it, at, at, in the stones around the fire, comes back. That line was in bones. Um, it kind of completes that idea that we we live. What's the line? We wake, we witness, then we then we're gone. You know, it's about life, which is what the album is about. Right. And this is really only my the only real criticism is with this song. To me, this is the weakest of the lot. Oh, really? Um, and it's great up until the bridge. Um, I should, no, I never saw stars like that. Those lyrics, and the yeah. little bit about uh, for after that. You know, I you know I like you this way, and then it gets really rambly. The band just carries on in this groove, and she's kind of just calling back to previous lyrics. Yeah, um, it, it just doesn't really work for me. I kind of it kind of loses my attention up until um, the part about um, we wake, we witness, and we're gone. We're only bones of stories on, on pretty, but we don't last long. Love that line. Yeah, you know, and there's there's a couple of bunch of calls calls and responses to um, we're only bones of stories on, and then it gets a little rambly again. Um, it's just, I hate to use this word cause I do love Prague. We both love Prague and Prague is the definition of this, but it gets just a little self-indulgent to me. No, <laughs> <laughs> it just feels a little rambling, you know? I mean, come on. You haven't listened to enough Emerson, Lake and Palmer. To think <laughs> oh, yeah. This gets self-indulgent. <laughs> right, right. But I mean, on this album saying it's the weak spot is like you said earlier, it, it's, it doesn't really mean much when the album is so strong. I think it's just the perfect outro for it, though, because it just it it's you know the reflective. It's um, it, it sums up the entire album mm -hmm. pretty much to yeah. a T. It, it is the the post climax, you know. It's the denouement. Yeah. Um, yeah and exactly. So that's that's the album. Um, this is my current favorite favorite album. Marion is my current favorite recording artist. So, needless to say, I strenuously recommend this album. Right, and I I understand your optimism about the state of rock. You know, if uh, you know, you've been listening to this one, you we, know, we've had an ongoing debate about whether or not rock and roll is dead. Um, don't want to get into it now, but <laughs> this is you giving a little bit of ground. Oh, this, uh, but yeah, I'd easily recommend this <laughs> one. Definitely. That's it for Standing Stones by Marion Call. If you enjoyed this video, well, well, first off, again, just a reminder about our concert, um, 5 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, the twenty first. It's, it should be an event. It should be very interesting. Um, if, if you enjoyed this video, please give, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Down in the description, you'll find a link to Standing Stones on Bandcamp. And, of course, the concert. It's over at concertwindow.com slash Marion Call. Again, there'll be a link. Until next time, and we'll be reviewing Ted Leo's the, the Tyranny of Distance. Always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. You are.